listening to the Escapart Podcast. My name is Stuart Powell. Thank you for listening. The Escapart Podcast is broadcast on YouTube as well as via Buzzsprout and is done now downloadable via www.escapart.co.uk. So hopefully through one of those channels you've been able to uh, pick up this up. So thank you for listening. The following is uh, something of a mixtape. Uh, the Escapart Podcast has... Uh, many many episodes but uh, the following is a recent podcast that we didn't broadcast uh, so we're editing it to keep it relevant and I hope that you do like it I hope you continue to subscribe and if you've got any comments at the end of this please just uh, get in touch thank you uh, let's crack here on. we go this podcast uh, is never meant to be just focused on escapology or magic or the wider context of things it's also there to talk about media and other interests so we've we've talked at length about uh, other world records we've talked at length about how houdini has become an adjective as well as a noun uh, we've talked about the joy of uh, setting world records and also the agony of it because nobody sees the strength elements of it and that's what i'm going to segue in and talk about today so uh, stay Keep listening to the Escapart channel, keep listening to the podcasts if you'd like to know more about magic and escapology. But today it's going to be uh, talking about a world record attempt. Well, three world record attempts I've got coming up. And these attempts are not magic related, they're actually physical, they're strength related. And the first one I'd like to talk about is the one that nearly crippled me last year. And I'm not saying that in the sense of uh, being dramatic. It physically cramped me out. It physically destroyed me. On the same day that I set the world record for the fastest escape from leg irons and the most escaped from handcuffs in one moment, in one minute, in a moment? Gosh, I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen. My ego seems to be coming in. Yes, it only took me a moment to escape from nine handcuffs. No, it took you a minute to escape from nine handcuffs, Stuart. Get your head back in the game. It took me a minute to unlock nine pairs of handcuffs. When you say it out loud, it sounds incredible. But when you're physically restrained in nine sets of handcuffs and you're trying to undo them, uh, you suddenly find yourself going, why, did, why didn't I learn a card trick? Seriously, playing around with some sponge balls, it, it, it's got to be so much easier than this. And uh, and it, I mean no disrespect to any magician, I appreciate the time and effort that goes into your craft, and it is something I cannot emulate, which is why I am doing escapology, because it's something I can do. And I digress, as ever. What we find ourselves, well, I found my, the situation I found myself in, was it was the hottest day of the year and I was so far obviously there were hotter days after because it was in the middle of early June but it was the warmest it had been all year and I have never physically lifted weights outside until then and it's radically different from working inside because the sun is shining on you I appreciate all of this is common sense when you say it out loud but at the time you're not thinking about it. It's one of those things you gloss over. So I'm outside in the baking sun, having been in the baking sun for four hours, having gone through emotional highs and physical lows, getting out of restraints, I then think, I know for the next hour I'm going to lift a kettlebell non-stop near enough and try and set a world record by lifting this now for those of you who don't know what a kettlebell is it's like a cannonball with a handle on top and the one I was lifting was 24 kilos which is a competition weight that you can lift and what we're seeing and what happened to me was at the 15 minute mark when I normally just start to breathe just a little bit heavier than normal just when the pressure's building I breathed out and my entire right hand side, inside the rib cage, inside the diaphragm, everywhere, from my shoulder to my hip, locked down in cramp. Now, of course, that's not an easy thing to do because you're trying to breathe out. At the same time, your body is trying to force every every amount of amount of blood away from that particular section. And if you then try and breathe in, you haven't got any space to breathe. 
the paramedic came over and although I set a reasonable title, uh, time of about an uh, amount lifted of about 7 tonnes it was no, nowhere near the 14 and a, half, and a half I was aiming for so that uh, did uh, make me wary I mention all this because last week uh, I got close to setting the world record in training I got very close I've changed what I'm doing I've changed my approach I'm even going to change the venue but the reality is is that I'm getting close and now I'm getting that little nervousness and not many people know this uh, but there is that nervousness that creeps in it's a bit like it before you have an exam or you go in for an operation you start to think of everything that can go wrong you start to think of everything that can conceivably misfire and I have a very vivid imagination so I can actually picture in my head things going wrong and it's not a pretty sight uh, I've had many a, a just uh, the most polite and Disney version of it all I've had many wardrobe malfunctions in my time in the gym and during training I had one mid lift for this kettlebell uh, and the lift in question is known as a squat swing and it's not something that is actually uh, trained for for competition kettlebell lifting so there's very few books very few uh, explanations on how to deal with it but basically it's a a bit like the move that you see Olympic weightlifters do where they lift the bar off the ground so I've got to squat down pick the kettlebell up between my legs and then lift it and lift my arms forward as I'm lifting it up straight arms so that the kettlebell is at 90 degrees to the ground it's gone through an arc it's gone through one quarter of a full rotation and it's dead ahead of me at eye level and I've got to then return it back to the start position and then repeat in a single fluid movement so it's basically a lift and a return a lift and a return all of which takes energy all of which compresses your diaphragm and puts your body under extreme load and the weight I'm lifting is comparable to being a third to half of my body weight each time and I'm gonna to have to lift it about 360 times to break the world record and that is a little bit ominous because I know the toll it's taking on my body no one else knows not even I can tell you that it's taking a toll on my body I know it's taking a toll on my body I'm trying to be the best on earth what do you think it was going to do uh, so I don't mean to be dramatic but I do know that this requires a lot of effort and I salute the current world record holder he is 15 kilos lighter than I am he is 20 odd years younger than me and I cannot possibly trade stamina with him so I have to go in a different direction I have to go and do power I have to do raw power and which is odd because the previous records I've done I've been the one doing more reps so this is completely a new direction to me I, 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 so it's it's kind of ominous I'm aiming for August and I'm recording this in May so August I hope to be able to come back on here and say I'm a world record holder I'm also I've also got a bit more pressure in that I'm going to be doing it for uh, a community group I'm doing it for a community radio station so I feel obligated it's not like where I, I do feel the pressure because it's something that I it's a cause I'm, I'm committed to I, it's not like in the past when I've done fundraising at the same time as the whole nation is fundraising for something like children in need or other groups or there's a, a massive group of people all doing an escape artist relay and that's a big shout out to, to Cliff and everyone in the US who for, who did the World Escape Artist Relay event a few years ago very much appreciated, absolutely brilliant and the forerunner of us coming together as a group across the world and that's 
that's the one that's uh, that's the one that's in the back of my mind at the moment. That's the record that is scaring me. The next record that is scaring me, and this is where I have to pause. It's frying pan rolling, and I've spoken about frying pan rolling on an earlier podcast. And there is an ebook available if you'd like to go to escapart.co.uk and take a look. You can download the ebook. Uh, it explains exactly how to roll a frying pan. And there is a world record for this, and I have to roll 15 frying pans in one minute. That's one every four seconds. There is a size requirement, there is a thickness requirement, and there are certain other criteria as well. And again, I am going to try and break this world record. It is not easy, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it's something I've been practicing for, and I've been practicing for it for about three years on and off. But it is still something that is incredibly risky. It is incredibly ominous for me because you can't, once you've rolled a frying pan, you can't unroll it. So it, you only really get one or two shots. So you don't know unless you've got 80 or 100 pounds to go and buy these at retail. You don't know whether or not you're going to be able to do 15. And here's the here's the little trick. They have to have, once they've been rolled into a tube, they have to have a certain circumference. If, if the roll isn't tight enough, if the roll isn't a certain thickness, uh, you know, if the diameter, and th- if you can put a tape around it and it is more than a certain number of centimetres, it doesn't count. So you can't just bend it in half and say, yep, that's done. You've got to bend it to the point where there is physically a tight tube. And finally, the last record I'm going for is tricep lifting, which is your triceps are opposite your biceps. They're the ones that move your arm back. And there's a world record to go for that. I have under one authority the record for that, I believe, still. But Guinness has a slightly different set of rules. So having done the frying pan bending and having done the kettlebell lifting, I'm going to get get that record. And in total, that will bring my world record collection to 15. And that's it. That's the three records I'm attempting this year. No escapology. But each one of those does require a lot of effort. It does require a lot of time. And... Sometimes, with an intense period of training, it's not that I don't want to talk or record a podcast, it's just physically, if I did, you might as well get a Labrador puppy in here and just hear it panting, because there's just not a lot I can actually say, uh, other than, ow, or that hurt. So, apologies that that you've got a burst of podcasts rather than uh, a steady stream, I'll try and make sure that happens, but... Before I go, just want to deliver and say thank you for listening.